happy Sunday, everyone. How's everyone's weekend been? I hope you've had a great weekend. If this is your first time joining, my name is Beverly Johnson, um, and welcome to the Fit and Fear segment. Today, we're, we're going to be talking about is something that we all struggle with. It's something that is not born to many of us. It is sugar. Yes, sugar. So before we go into the topic, let me make sure I have everything set up. If this is your first time joining me, my name is Beverly Johnson, owner of Genesis Fitness. I'm located here in Huntsville, Alabama. Um, I have been in the business as a trainer, group fitness instructor, coach for about 10 years now. And so I've been a part of the Swagger Magazine platform for a few years. And so our goal is, is and will continue to be to add value to provide you with a resource hey how you doing uh, to provide you as a resource for all things health all things wellness with a teachy bit of humor and sometimes just random just humor and jokes but more than anything i am so glad that you are joining me today on this beautiful weather if you sense a little congestion if you sense a little stuffiness my allergies are on like a thousand. Nature hates me today, but that is okay because I'm still going to make it through. We're still going to have a good time and we're still going to talk about all things health related. Now, next week, if my calendar is right. Hey, girl. Hey, if my calendar is correct, next week is Easter Sunday. And so since it is Easter Sunday. We're not having a segment next Sunday um, in observation of the holiday. So use next Sunday to be with your friends, your family, or just if that is your desire to observe next Sunday. But for me, I am going to take some time off and observe the holiday. So without further ado, with what little voice I have left, let's get into today's topic, which is sugar. See, I've gotten good. I've managed to make charts now. I shrink myself. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is sugar. Not just the sugar, but how it impacts us and the cravings and recognizing when you've had too much. Did you know that there are over 61 different names for sugar? And here are just a few. So when we hear people say that you're going to give up sugar altogether, it can be almost impossible because there are so many different names for sugar. It is prevented in so many different forms. So some that I pulled out was cane sugar, raw sugar, corn uh, sweetener, glucose, agave, high fructose corn syrup, some other ones, um, maple syrup, honey, carbonado sugar molasses, sucrose, um, uh, brown sugar, sucrose, maltose. There are so many different names for sugar that it is almost impossible to figure out how you're going to avoid sugar. And that is the hard part about when we say certain things are sugar-free. What their meaning is, it doesn't have the raw sugar that we're accustomed to. It doesn't have the the five pound bag, the, the dominoes, if it's in your area, the white sugar, the raw sugar. When they say it's sugar free, they're more than likely have added um, aspartame if it's a soda. It probably has high fructose corn syrup. It probably has the glucose. Um, it may have the maltose. So it may not have the name sugar proper that you are familiar with, but it may have a different form of sugar. So when we're trying to figure out how to live a sugar-free lifestyle, it can be difficult. So at best, what I often encourage many of my clients to do is to figure out how to minimize how much sugar you consume every day. Because you will almost go on a journey of trying to figure out when you're talking to people at the store going, looking at your package going, let me figure out what form of sugar this is because it's going to be difficult. 
So today's topic is to give you a sense of awareness that sugar can come in all different forms. Sugar can come in all shapes and sizes, but be aware that just because it may say sugar-free doesn't necessarily mean it has not been sweetened with some type of another type of sugar. So I just want you to keep that on the back of your mind that even though it may say sugar-free, it may have another form of sugar. So go into our next topic. Did you know that on average, we consume over 17 teaspoons a day of sugar? 17 teaspoons. Now, a visual of that is if you get 17 spoons and you hold it together, that is a lot of sugar each day. And so even though it doesn't sound like a lot, that can add up to over 270 calories a day. And that is the equivalent of a candy bar or a soda, depending on which brand you drink. So when we're saying that, you know, on average, we're consuming 17 teaspoons a day. Think about the days where you've had the candy bar and the soda. Then that becomes an equivalent of 540 calories a day. Or think about if you've gone and you got the, you went out to a, a fast food restaurant for lunch and you upsized your soda. And so then now you triple your consumption of sugar. And so even though it may have been, it may have said diet or it may have said sugar-free, it is possibly, possibly been sweetened with something off of the 61 name. So that is the rub and the challenge that we're sitting in and saying that I'm just going to cut out sugar altogether. It's going to be difficult. Because I remember specifically in my journey, every day after lunch, what I told myself was that I was going to have one of those little meals, the little frozen meals for lunch. And my trade-off was that I was going to have a candy bar and soda to go with it. And so at a minimum every day, I was adding in the other 540 calories of my meal. So what I should have done was just ate a healthier meal instead of trying to cheat myself and getting the little frozen meal that may have had 290 calories. But then I put in the other 500 calories by having a candy bar and a soda every day. So what ended up happening was that I still was consuming the same amount of calories as opposed to just having a more balanced meal. And so when you're starting to look for ways to eliminate um, sugar from your diet or minimize sugar, the first thing that I, hey, good evening. The first thing that I did in my journey was that I gave up um, candy bars and sodas every day. And doing that alone removed an additional 1,500 calories a day, uh, 1,500 calories a week out of my diet. And so when I started my journey, I didn't do anything um, over the top. I didn't do anything um, extreme. I just sat down and realized maybe I should cut the candy bar out my diet and maybe I should cut the soda. So for me, in my journey, I don't drink soft drinks anymore. Or if I do, it's just because I just kind of want the fizz. So it may just, for me, it's a Sprite at that point. But again, this is part of my journey and the things that I had to figure out what worked for me. Now, I know you're wondering, if we consume 17 teaspoons a day, how much are we supposed to have? On average, we're supposed to have no more than 150 calories a day of sugar. 150 calories, which I just heard someone say is borderline impossible. And you are absolutely correct. It is almost impossible to meet that threshold of 150 calories of sugar every day. Because on average, who's going to sit down and figure out how to calculate it every day? 
who's going to sit down and figure out, okay, if I do eat this and I eat this and I eat this, then this is going to work here. So this is just a guideline or just something to keep in your back of your mind when you have those moments of having the sugar crush, the sugar craving. Because according to the American Heart Association, beverages are the leading category for sources of added sugar. From our soft drinks to fruit drinks, um, coffee and tea, and then our energy drinks at number number four. I almost said number three. It was one of those days. And so when we're in this space of trying to figure out what to give up, what to give up, and how to give it up, we don't always know what to eliminate first. So again, today is just to give you an awareness of how much sugar we can consume without even realizing it, how much sugar uh, we've been consuming, and what to look out for. So we say, how does our body react to it? I'm glad you asked. Some signs of too much sugar, and these are just a few that I pulled, you become irritable. Because if you've had that sugar overload and you've had the high, normally what comes after it is that is the low. I share my story with anybody who will listen. I had one in my whole life, one Mountain Dew. And I will tell everybody, I don't see how y'all drink Mountain Dew. I was so wired for sound that day. I couldn't see straight. How you all drink Mountain Dew? Hey, how you doing? How y'all drink Mountain Dews is beyond me because I remember sitting at my desk and I was so wired. I had the shakes from the caffeine and the sugar. And I asked my coworker, how do you get over this? And he said, oh, you drink another Mountain Dew. And I was like, not in this lifetime, not today. No, mm -mm, mm -mm. So I had in my lifespan one Mountain Dew, and that was one too many for me because I was so, my nerves were all over the place. And I remember when I was coming off of that sugar rush, I was just irritable. And so one sign of you having too much sugar is that you become irritable because you had a blood sugar spike that is spiking energy levels are crashing. Another sign is that you have fatigue and low energy. So if you don't know, sugar is easily absorbed and digested. So if you're feeling fatigued, it could be because of how much sugar that you're consuming. Sugar can be a, a great source of energy. It can give you that quick pick me up. But right after that, your energy level starts to crash. And so you spend your whole day up, down. Hey, friend! So you spend that day up, down, up, down. And that's not always a good place to be because then you're looking for that next sugar high. You're looking for that next thing. And so we start the whole day where you start off, you got to have a coffee or sweet tea or hot chocolate. Then a few hours later, you still need that thing to push you through because if you, you have a day job or if you're at home caring for people um, in whatever capacity, you feel that lull, so you may go get you a um, something else to drink. Or you may go and get a, a quick candy bar, a quick snack. And so it picks you up again, and then you're always up and down, which causes us to always be in a state of chasing that next high. And I mean that in regards to sugar. Because you're looking for that thing to pick your energy up. Something else you may notice is that you're having a craving for sweets all the time. Down here in the South, as soon as you eat dinner, you're like, mm, I need something sweet. And when I was little and I was with my grandparents, they would always have sweet rolls. For those that don't know, it's a cinnamon roll. So every day after dinner, we would have a sweet roll. I think I was more focused on eating that cinnamon roll or the sweet roll than I was really the dinner because it was like if if getting to the, the sweets was to eat the dinner, then it's okay, I'll, I'll eat the dinner. Just let me have the sweet roll. Because studies have shown that if you're craving sweets, you may be addicted to the feel-good effect that sugar has on the brain. 
It's that happy hormone. And so as soon as you eat it, you feel that that's the happy hormone kicking in. So sugar, eating sugar increases the dopamine and the dopamine rise itself causes an increased craving for sugar. So now that's how we get on this vicious cycle because eating the sugar gives us that happy feel. And again, we've all been designed for sugar. All of us, the first thing that we've all gotten hooked on since we've been little, since six months old, was sugar. Because when we were little, the first thing our parents may have squished up and given to us may have been a piece of cake, may have been a french fry, it may have been something sweet. And I, you probably remember when you eat, had that first sweet, how your eyes expanded and you felt that sugar rush. We all know that experience. Yes, yes, the applesauce. It was the applesauce. Definitely, it was Mott's. Our first, our first uh, hit was, was respectfully, uh, was Mott's or apple juice. And we all remember that that feeling of, of having that sugar on our palate. And it's like, ooh, we all know that feeling. I remember being little and my grandparents had gave me a little bitty coffee cup. So when they would have coffee, I would have coffee. And at that time, I had more coffee, more sugar than I did coffee. Um, so I was at one point, it felt like I was just basically drinking. I was drinking sugar with a hint of coffee because I remember that feeling of, of just the sugar. Another thing that you may not realize as a sign of too much sugar is joint pain. According to arthritis care and research, research shows that consuming, I'm reading to make sure I have my facts straight, um, regularly consuming sugar sweetened sodas is, a, is associated with an increased risk of rheumatoid arthritis in some women, including those with late onset rheumatoid arthritis. Consuming too much sugar can lead to systemic inflammation, which may lead to joint pain. So there are other culprits that, you know, we often talk about when we eat too much sweets, talking about the acne, talking about weight gain, but there are other inherent problems that we don't always realize come with eating too much sugar. And again, I'm not absent for that. I'll tell anybody for at one point I had um, a, a, a sugar crush with chocolate M&M's. I love, I, I'm, I'm a simple country girl. I love plain M&M's. I really do. I love plain M&M's. And almost if you've seen the Nutty Professor with Eddie Murphy and he was down in the M&M's, I wasn't too far from that, but I was almost close. Because again, I had a craving for sweets. And that, that happy hormone, the release, the dopamine that comes with experiencing that candy, the sugar, I had all this. I had the irritability, I had the fatigue, I had the cravings, and I had the joint pain. So all these signs that I am intimately aware. So when I made this chart, it wasn't things that I had to read about and research. I just had to tap back into my memory bank and figure out how did I feel. Now, do I still enjoy some sweets? Yes, in moderation. So if I do want some candy, I get the fun size pack of M&M's now. Because y'all, I ain't breaking up with these M&M's. I'm just not. Not breaking up with M&M's. So for me, I had to learn moderation. So again, because as a coach, as a trainer, I will never uh, tell anyone to go into depravity. I will never tell you to go into some extreme diet restriction. I will never tell you to do anything that's going to cause you any pain or grief. Your journey is to be lived. Your life is to be experienced. And life is to be enjoyed. So part of this journey is learning what your triggers are and learning to love this world in moderation. So these are the things that I experienced in my journey. Irritability, low energy. I was on that seesaw all day. Sweets on sweets on sweets. During my work day, I would go from coffee, have a teacher bit of water. Then for lunch, I would have a diet um, soda. Then later on that evening, it still wouldn't do it. I'd have another cup of coffee. And then I'd have some sweet tea for dinner. And somewhere interspersed in that was a teacher bit of water. I would have the cravings for sweets that as soon as it felt like I swallowed my food, I needed that sweet roll again. 
but that sweet roll became replaced with a snicker bar. So I traded one thing for something else and didn't even realize. And lastly was the joint pain. Because when we're certain things that when you're starting to experience problems and certain types of inflammation and joint pain, sometimes it's your food. And that's something that we don't always speak about and that we're not always aware of that sometimes it's the food that's causing us problems. Now, what are some of our factors that cause our sugar craving? Most people don't realize that dehydration can cause food craving. Because when you're hungry, your body, when you're thirsty, your body is starting to give you cues that it needs something. And sometimes we mistake the, the cue of dehydration that I need to eat something. For example, if you're having the sign of dehydration, it's easy for us to just eat something. But so oftentimes, it is your cue for dehydration. That your body's like, I'm, I'm kind of thirsty. Can you help me? Another one is the hormonal changes. For women, cravings for sugar can be a part of our hormones changes. And that is something that if you're still at the space of having um, monthly visitors, your monthly cycle, you may notice that when it's that time of the month, you may notice your, your cravings for sweets goes through the roof. And that's part of the hormonal changes that we often experience. Another stressor that can cause our cravings is stress. I am a full witness to this one because when I would be at work and I would have a pressing deadline and then also not realizing that I still was trading sweet rolls for m and m but at that point, it became hot tamales that when I was really stressed, I would go for hot tamales. And I don't know if you've seen those boxes they sell at Walmart, but it's almost like this size comes out to here. The movie size. I could eat a movie size box of M&M's by myself in two days. Flat. Two days. And it was a serving meant for four people. So I was eating a serving size of four people of hot tamales within two days. And not only was I eating it, I had a stash in my desk because, you know, break glass in case of emergency, I had hot tamales on standby. Because when the stressors hit, I was turning to that happy hormone to help bring me back down. What I had to learn is figuring out how to cope with the stress. I had to figure out different ways to when my stressors or triggers arose, how do I adequately manage handling my stress? So the first thing I had to do was get rid of the hot tamales. And I'm telling you, it wasn't easy because I, I threw them away. I was tempted to just eat them all and move on with my life. But I was like, no, I'm going to go cold turkey. So that's how I learned to minimize my sugar cravings is that I went cold turkey. I just gave up sugar for like a week. I gave up like coffee. I gave up peas. I gave up extra sweets for like a week. And when I tell you that was the longest week because I got sick. And it was a sugar, almost a sugar fever, sugar flu. I don't know what they call it. I detox. I detox my system. And that's when it really hit me how much sugar I was consuming. When I didn't have those things, when I didn't have the hot tamales. When I didn't have the m and when I didn't have the other things that I was in, um, indulging in, my body reacted. Similar to if you've ever given up caffeine and you felt that withdrawal feeling, it's the same thing. So again, the goal is to practice moderation. And the last um, thing that causes sugar cravings is one that we don't always talk about. It is nutrient deficiency. Deficiencies in certain minerals like our zinc, our iron, magnesium can lead to sugar craving. And this is one that I actually I've read about before, but I didn't really do a deep dive into it um, until really right now. Is that magnesium deficiency, especially magnesium, can drive sugar cravings is that the mineral helps convert food into energy. 
So if you're in a space sometimes where you're having leg cramps or you may be experiencing the sugar cravings, it may very well be that you are um, having a magnesium deficiency. And so we don't always talk about the like magnesium and zinc because it's not something that's always on the radar. It's not something like you go and get your test uh, blood work for iron. It's, I've never heard too many people say, I'm going to get a magnesium blood workup. So it's something that if you're noticing that you are experiencing um, constant problems, um, it may be worth reviewing that if you go get your checkup, ask for a full, a full blood workup to find out. Let's let's hone in on what's really happening because a magnesium deficiency can be associated with increased stress, anxiety, and depression. So sometimes if you're in that space where you're like, something feels off. And I can't put my fit, my finger on it. Be sure to, again, go get your physical. Get a full blood workup. Because it may be in one of these little areas of magnesium that may be causing it. And before we head on out, what are some things that can help car pray up, um, help with our sugar cravings? And I get this list of things that were that suggested is not as, 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 as smexy. As, as saying, you know, the cakes, the pies, the desserts, the things that we would naturally gravitate towards. I understand that when we're in a space of wanting something to give us that happy hormone, something that we're looking for to give us that pop of joy, these may not be things that you would normally go to. But these are things I would like for you to consider. Foods that help with your sugar cravings. Berries. Now, what type of berries? Hold on. Okay, my list, I did not give it all. So berries, and the good part about berries is that they are natural resources. Um, you have a variety to choose from. Let me get here. And that the good part about berries is that they can reduce inflammation and prevent heart disease. Berries may also help you maintain and lose weight. They may also help lower your blood pressure by boosting blood valve function. So before you dismiss the options of having berries, they're naturally sweet. They are available. You have your chance, um, an opportunity to figure out which ones appeal to you more than others. But also, I put an asterisk next to your berries. Pay attention to the serving size also. I have a friend of mine, she loves cherries. And you know the cherries come in their natural bag, the bag of cherries. If she's not careful, she will eat the entire thing because they're small, they're handy, you just grab a few. So be sure that even though you're making the swap, pay attention to the serving size that comes with berries because even then having a serving size of berries may actually come out to be maybe 15 to 20 per serving. And that 15 to 20 per serving may equate to 100 to 150 calories. So it's an excellent option, but pay attention to the serving size. The next one, the avocado, the healthy fat. Another option that you can look at are nuts such as pistachios. Um, years ago, my sister had a friend that pr pronounced them as pistachios. And because of that, I can no longer unhear that. So I now have to work at saying it's pistachios and not pistachios. Um, check out your seeds, sesame seeds, chia seeds. And so you have options to consider. Am I asking you to go cold turkey and throw everything out right now and look at, uh, consider just throwing everything away and going and now stock your house up with berries and avocados and nuts? No. But I'm asking you to start consider making a substitution because this is something that I had to do. So I got rid of the m and m So now when I want something sweet, I ate a fruit cup. Does it replace my favorite? Fabulous m and not always, but it's a trade-off to myself. So at the end of the week on Fridays, I, re I allow myself to have some m and Because again, it's about balance and sanity. And last, always remember, the greatest wealth we can ever have in this world is our health. So today was for informational purposes, for you to get an idea that to say we're going to go totally sugar-free 
can be difficult because the Totally Go Sugar Free is to figure out all 61 different types of sugar and their name and to actively research every product that you're going to consume and figure out does it have that sugar because practically every food that is processed today has sugar in it so the goal is not to become restrictive but become knowledgeable and figure out how we can make better choices in our process in, in our food selections as well as figure out where we can substitute um, those things when possible. That is all I had. If you would, oh, wait a minute, let me go back. If you would like to have a copy of these slides or if you have any information, please feel free to reach out to me, email me. Um, I'm always happy to share the information that you, if you like it. Um, no, thank you for coming by and hanging out with me. I truly do not take any of you for granted. You could do anything and be anywhere. But every Sunday for the last two years almost, you all make the decision to come hang out with me for about 30 minutes a day, every Sunday. And I am forever grateful for you to do that because without your support, we couldn't continue this. So thank you for being here. Thank you for giving me the space and the grace and the platform. Thank you for allowing this little old country girl from Mobile, Alabama to have a space where she can share her passion. As I said earlier, we're going to be off next week because it is Easter Sunday. Um, enjoy your time with your family. Enjoy your time with your friends. Um, enjoy the meal. If, if you're going to enjoy a slice of red, a red velvet cake or some pound cake or sweet potato pie, um, and enjoy yourself because life is to be experienced and love and enjoy is be present so i never will advocate for you to do something extreme i will never advocate for you to do something that's going to hurt yourself but i am going to advocate for you for all of us to make sound decisions that will allow us to leave a legacy for our family of love of wellness of of, of happiness so with all that being said have a great week and i will see you all the 16th I will see y'all on the 16th. Bye, y'all.